January 14th, 2011. The first episode of Ninjago Masters of Spinjitsu aired. I had seen a trailer for it maybe a week or some days prior, and I played the game Lego Universe, and so I immediately recognized the ninja hoods from that game. They were in this show. I'm like, cool, me, 10-year-old kid, excited about a new Lego show that is coming. And then I watch it. And I did not think that it would last for 10 years. I'm SPI, I'm a 20 year old future youth minister, and I'm also the published author of a book called Rise of the Grey Ninja, and I do stop motion videos here on YouTube as well as other types of YouTube videos, and I watched Ninjago back when it first aired, and it has been so cool to see how it has grown, how the community has grown, and in this video I'm going to talk about the impact that it's had on me. So I have here with me a bunch of Lego instruction manuals and I'm just going to go through some of them. Uh, here we have Garmadon's Dark Fortress. This was something that I got, I remember, in Christmas of 2011. Um, the Monastery of Spinjitzu. Fun fact, Ninjago actually had a board game. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It comes with these uh, micro figures of the ninja and the skeletons. And it actually had another game called, anyone remember this? Skeleton Bowling. Yeah, this is a spinner set. Um, it was a set with a spinner, I should say. And it's kind of fun. <laughs> and here's something pretty cool in the 2011 sets. They actually had the map to the four golden weapons, as you can see there. And here is my very first Ninjago set. 2263 Turbo Strider. I did not think when I picked this up that I would still be into this theme. So one big way that Ninjago impacted me is that before I started watching Ninjago, I really wasn't into the concept of ninja, but then as I watched Ninjago, I just loved the idea of them. And eventually, I came up with the idea of Rise of the Grey Ninja, uh, which is actually my own published book, and it's about a character named Zack Rylar who becomes a ninja in a world like our own, and he goes off and fights crime as a vigilante, and he's trained by his 80-year-old grandfather uh, to fight this gang, and the gang believes what they're doing is right. Is it right? You'll have to read for yourself. So I can thank LEGO Ninjago because without Ninjago, Rise of the Grey Ninja may not have happened. Another big way that Ninjago has inspired me is just by making YouTube videos. When I started making Ninjago videos, that's when I really got more invested in YouTube and more people started uh, coming to my channel and it was just awesome to see like how much of a community is out there. I also would not have met so many friends that I have today if not for Ninjago. The Ninjago community has so many people who just love Ninjago and it's just really cool to connect with people that have this common interest as I do. And it's been cool to collaborate with uh, different creators because of Ninjago. I've had my own podcast before called Pod Jitsu where I've talked about Ninjago. I've started stop motion because of Ninjago. I started really branching out my content and doing some talk videos because of Ninjago theories, all this sorts of stuff because of this show. And one really cool message that Ninjago has is iron sharpens iron, that we can build each other up as iron sharpens iron. Another that's said a lot in the show is Ninja Never Quit. And it's a really great slogan, uh, really easy to remember, and I think it's just great for kids and youth and even adults um, just to remember to not quit, to not give up, to endure. There's a saying that the sensei in my book says a lot, it's focus and press on. And it's kind of similar, this concept of endurance. And how can we endure? Well, Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him 
endure the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. We can look to Jesus as the perfect example of endurance as he looked beyond the pain of the cross, the joy beyond it, that his price that he paid would save us. He endured the cross and he died for us that if we believe in him, we will be saved. So I encourage you today, if you're going through something, to look to Jesus as the perfect example of endurance and to trust in him.